What is going on my friends? Hank here with some breaking scale modeling news to share with you all. I wasn't going to post another video this week, but this one is just too exciting to pass up and I think you guys are going to be stoked about it too. So the Nuremberg Toy Fair is this week, the first one we've had in three years because of the pandemic. And to me, it always uses this event as an opportunity to announce some of their upcoming releases. And they did not disappoint this time. Oh boy. So I was scrolling Instagram last night and boom, I see this post from the Tamiya USA Instagram account. We are getting another 135 scale infantry pack, and this one is beautiful. Following up their super successful German infantry mid-World War II set from 2020 and their U.S. infantry scout set from just last year, it looks like we're now getting a 135 scale German infantry late World War II figure set. So, why am I excited about this? Didn't we just get a German infantry set from Tamiya? Yes, we did, but this one is very different. A lot changed between 1942 and 1944, for example, and that is reflected in the uniforms, weapons, and equipment that German soldiers were wearing in the field. In our 2020 mid-war infantry kit, which is a fantastic kit that I really love, you can check out my full painting tutorial for these guys right up here. In this kit, all the figures are wearing the standard early to mid-war here infantry uniforms. All five are in the original M36 contrast collar uniform tunic, gray trousers, they've all got on the tall jack boots, and everybody has an uncovered stall helm. Awesome. They, they look great. We've also got three riflemen with CAR 98s, our NCO has an MP40, and our machine gunner has an MG34. All perfectly capture your standard here infantry uniform and gear layout for the early to mid part of World War II. And I, like I said, I love that set. But now we're getting a whole new smattering of gear and equipment, and Tamiya did a fantastic job getting all the fine little details right. So let's go through each one of these guys left to right and talk about what great new features we're getting with these figures. Our first guy here, a rifleman, is in a new later war tunic. This is the M40 tunic, and the most noticeable difference here is that the contrast collar has gone away. All five of these fellows are wearing the M40, which ended up being the standard here uniform for the back half of the war. So perfect, good start. Our rifleman has also moved away from the taller jack boot. Now he's got the lower ankle boot with a canvas gaiter around his upper ankle, which is a very nice touch. Interestingly, three of our five figures have the low boots and gaiters, and two have the taller jack boots that we saw in the previous set, which is a cool little detail. Our rifleman has been upgraded from his CAR 98, he's now got a Gewehr 43, which was the German army's attempt to move away from the bolt-action Mauser rifles that they've been using forever, and an attempt to counter the semi-automatic M1 Garand and Soviet SVT-40. The Gewehr was a 10-round semi-automatic rifle, and it entered production in 1943 and started to see service in the latter half of the war, so it's very cool to see it here in our late war infantry set. This first fella also has a Teller mine anti-tank mine, so he's ready to do some business on that front. And finally, our rifleman has a cloth camouflaged helmet cover in German splinter pattern, or splitter tarn muster. This is a particularly interesting feature because we always tend to associate German World War II infantry with all these cool camouflage patterns and uniforms, and the splitter tarn is one of the most iconic versions of these camouflages. I've got a replica helmet here with the splitter tarn covering. This camo scheme was made of various green, brown, and tan geometric shapes, and these little raindrop splinters going across them. It's a very cool camouflage. And the particularly interesting part about the splitter tarn is that it's really the only camouflage that we strongly associate with the regular German Wehrmacht. Most of the other camo schemes, like the Blurred Edge, P Dot, and Oak Leaf, Oak Leaf that you see up here, were almost exclusively distributed with SS troops, whereas everybody in the regular German Wehrmacht would get some sort of splitter tarn. So these guys are regular army, and accordingly, they get splitter tarn. So that's just our first figure, and that is a lot of great little features on this one fella alone. Moving on to our second figure from the left, this kneeling soldier is also in the M40 tunic and the wool trousers, but he's also got a significant weapon upgrade. This guy is an automatic rifleman, and he's armed with the STG-44, the Sturmgewehr 44, or the Assault Rifle 44. This impressive weapon was the world's first effective assault rifle, and it would go on to be a big influence on the development of the AK-47. The STG-44 first hit the battlefield in 1944, and over 400,000 were produced by war's end, so that's quite a few actually that made it into service. So our second figure here has got the impressive STG-44, which it looks like Tamiya did a wonderful job sculpting, and accordingly he's also got the STG-44 ammo pouches on his belt to fit the larger 30 round magazines for this rifle. He also has a plain uncovered stall helm, but I'm wondering if Tamiya is going to have options in the box for you to use either the covered or uncovered helmet for each one of these guys. That would be my guess based on some of the past figure packs, but I guess we'll see. Moving on to our third and middle figure here, not a ton of new information with this one. We've got the M40 tunic on our squad leader, but he's also got the collar piping to show his rank. He's in a great kneeling position, signaling a halt and looking back over his shoulder. He's wearing a covered helmet with the splitter tarn cover again, and he's got a nice set of binoculars and a map bag. 
He's also armed with an MP40, which we've seen with the mid-war kit. To me, it does a very nice job with the MP40 though, so I'm glad to see one in here. And finally, he's also got the taller jack boots. Nothing groundbreaking here, but a very solid figure nonetheless. Moving on to our fourth figure, and this is where things start to get wild. Look at this guy. First off, Zeltbon. So Zeltbon are essentially triangular pieces of fabric with buttons and buttonholes and a waterproof treating. And various Zeltbon could be buttoned together to make all sorts of different shelters for infantrymen in the field. And they were also often used as ponchos. You could fashion them in a certain way so you could put them over your head like a rain poncho and they'd pretty effectively keep you dry. And that is exactly what this figure is doing. He's got his Zeltbon, which is covered in the same splitter tarn camo pattern that we saw on our helmet covers. And he's wearing it like a poncho over his regular M40 tunic uniform. It is exceedingly rare to find Zeltbon ponchos done well in 135 scale figures I've found, especially in 135 scale plastic figures, so this is a real treat. I was so excited when I saw this and I cannot wait to get my hands on these figures. To me it did an excellent job here. In addition to a Zeltbon poncho, this figure also has the low boots and gaiters we saw on our first rifleman, as well as the uncovered Stallhelm. He also has an STG-44 slung over his back, which is a really cool touch. And he's got the magazine pouches for it that hang on his belt as well. And his STG-44 is hung over his back because he's currently holding a Panzerfaust. We love to see it. The Panzerfaust was a single-shot anti-tank weapon that entered production in 1942. It was small and simple to operate, which made it a very effective and dangerous weapon in the hands of regular infantrymen. These were deadly to Allied tanks and posed a real problem for Allied tankers, especially in close quarters fighting where a German soldier armed with a Panzerfaust could jump up and fire from around any corner. All in all here, fantastic figure, this guy looks awesome. And our fifth and final figure in this set is also a beauty. We've got our ankle boot and gator combo, our uncovered stall helm, and another Gewehr 43. We've also got our Zeltbon poncho again, except this soldier has fashioned it a little differently so that his arms have a bit more freedom of motion. And he also appears to have a wool greatcoat over his M40 tunic and under his poncho, which is a really nice touch. It's kind of hard to see, but it's got that larger collar popping out of the Zeltbon, and the bottom goes a little further past his knees. A very nice, subtle, differentiating touch here. And finally, and I love this detail, he's got an M24 steel Han Granata stuck in his belt. And it looks like we're getting decals for both the grenade and the Panzerfaust, which is awesome. So I think it's clear to say that I am stoked for this upcoming release from Tamiya. A fantastic set of figures in some dynamic poses with a whole range of accurate late war uniforms and equipment. I certainly will be picking up this set when it comes out. Tamiya, if you're watching, please send me one of these. No word on a release date for these yet, Scalemates doesn't even have an image loaded for them at the time of recording, but this will be kit number 35382. I'll also show a couple of pictures here that I was able to find of the finished kits in person. User Mark O posted these shots from the Nuremberg Toy Fair on the Missing Links message board, so shout out to him for these great shots. And there you have it. Tamiya has really stepped up their figure game in the last couple of years, and I am certainly not complaining. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little news video. I have been Hank from Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe right here for more scale modeling news, build videos, and tutorials. And if you'd like to check out how to paint up Tamiya's last set of German infantry figures, you can do so right here. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building. Cheers.